right. Good morning, everyone. I am uh, Council Member Rafael Salamanca, Chair of the Subcommittee on Planning, Dispositions, and Concessions. Welcome to today's hearings. Uh, today we've been joined by Council Member Mark Traeger, Council Member Idonis Rodriguez, and Council Member Lori Combo. Today we'll be voting to approve with modifications LUs 808 through 812, the Bedford Union Army application, striking MIH option 2 and adding option 1. On November 14, the subcommittee heard EDC's application for a proposed zoning map amendment from R6 to R7-2 and R7-2 slash C2-4, zoning text amendment to establish a mandatory inclusionary housing area special permit pursuant to ZR section 74-743, large-scale general development. Special permit pursuant to ZR section 74-532, reduction of parking requirements, and disposition approved for city-owned property at 1555 Bedford Avenue, Brooklyn, in order to facilitate the redevelopment of the Bedford Union Armory as a mixed-use community facility, recreation, office, and residential center. I want to acknowledge my colleague, Council Member Lori Combo, who fought on behalf of her community to dramatically increase the affordability of this project and improve the package of community benefits. I invite her now to deliver remarks on the project and the commitments she has obtained from the administration. Council Member. Thank you, Chair Salamanca, and I thank all of my colleagues for being here. I want to first start off by thanking all of you that are here for this uh, very important discussion, uh, as well as I want to thank all of the people that have been here when this discussion began six years ago. The dream, the vision to create a state-of-the-art recreational facility for our community. It started then by Congressman Major Owens, and we are here today as a result of his vision and his dream for the community. For more than six years, the Crown Heights community has discussed and debated what to do with the Bedford Union Armory. Discussions originally centered on the goal of a state-of-the-art indoor recreation center. At the start, housing was seen as secondary to this goal and was primarily included in the project as a way to fund the development of the recreation center. However, by the time EDC announced the selection of a developer in 2015, conditions in the community had dramatically changed, as we all know. The front lines of gentrification have arrived in Crown Heights and Central Brooklyn. Since 2010, the average rent in Crown Heights has increased by over 20 percent. But many in this room can testify to the fact that our housing rents have increased by more than 20 percent. Some have doubled and tripled in the time that they have been living in their apartments for over 20, 30, 40, and 50 years. Market rent, rent, rents are now far out of the reach of longtime residents who built and sustained this community. My family is amongst them, as we have lived in the East Flatbush Crown Heights section of Brooklyn for five generations. Many of those in rent-stabilized apartments are facing pressure and harassment from new landlords. In 2017, affordable housing is by far one of the most pressing issues facing our community. In this context, the community was right to recognize the original proposal for the armory, a proposal with housing used to fund the recreation center. But as I've stated, much has changed. Development of affordable housing on public land is one of the most important tools that we have to address this affordability crisis. And the Bedford Union Armory is one of the most significant pieces of public land we have left in Crown Heights. Throughout this ULERP process, I have repeatedly stated that development at the Armory most focus on helping Crown Heights ease the impacts of rising rents and gentrification. I promised to each and every person in our community that I would reject any proposal that included market rate condominiums and fail to provide a majority of apartments at rents that are truly affordable to the incomes of this working class community, our community. Today I am proud to announce a dramatically revised Bedford Union Armory project that now lives up to the values that I and so many of you in this room and beyond have fought to achieve. I want to take a few minutes to, with, Mr. with our chair to review what we as a council and what we as a community achieved over the course of the last few months. The original proposal included 50 percent market rate housing, including 48 luxury condominium units and 50 
quote unquote affordable housing units, with only 17 percent of units affordable at rents reflective of what the vast majority of residents in Crown Heights could afford. And we know that that would have led to mass gentrification of our community. Only 67 units in the original proposal were at below 60 percent AMI. As a result of my negotiations, the luxury condominium units have been completely eliminated from this project and the property will remain entirely in public ownership. This was something that was very important to the community. They stated it from the beginning that there would be no sale of the Bedford Union Armory, that public land should remain in the public's trust, and now we will have a project moving forward that will not include any sale, no luxury condominiums, and we are able to move forward in good consciousness. And fully, 60% of all units in the project. This was what was most critical to me. We started out with 67 units in the original project below 60% AMI. We now will have from 67 units, 250 units that will be affordable at the 60% AMI level or below. This is groundbreaking for the community of Crown Heights. 50 units will be affordable at 30% of AMI, 24 units at 40% of AMI, 24 units at 50% of AMI, and 152 units at 60% of AMI. This is re revolutionary in the sense that we have not seen this level of affordable housing come to the Crown Heights community in decades. There will also be a 10% set aside for those coming out of the shelter system into brand new quality housing. It was critical to me that we create a pathway within Crown Heights that will allow for residents that have been displaced from Crown Heights to be able to have a home in Crown Heights. 250 units at 60% of AMI and below is the most significant new affordable housing project, again, that the Crown Heights community has seen in decades. With half of these units reserved for residents of Community Board 8, this project will now make a meaningful impact in offering relief for the affordable housing crisis in Crown Heights. We're also modifying this application to require the lower income MIH option so that deeper affordability levels will be permanently affordable. On to the Recreation Center. The Bedford Union Armory will also deliver on the original goal of a state-of-the-art indoor recreation center with low-cost community access. The Armory's historic drill shed will be converted into a center with three full-size basketball courts, multi-purpose court space for activities like indoor soccer, a six-lane, 25-meter indoor swimming pool, and fitness rooms. Never before has a recreational facility such as this been seen in central Brooklyn, not in my lifetime. As part of the terms of the 99-year ground lease, remember, the armory property is being leased, not sold to a developer. The developer will be required to provide a baseline of $1.25 million in community benefits annually and is incentivized to provide an annual total of up to $1.75 million, which escalates over time. The original proposal would have only required a baseline of $500,000 in annual community and benefits. I insisted that EDC increase this requirement to $1.25 million to legally lock in a higher level of community access to the armory. Most of the benefit will come in the form of low-cost community access to the recreation center. Half of all memberships will be reserved for the local community at a rate of $10 a month per person and $8 per month for kids, which will be unlimited access to the fitness rooms and weekly open court times. This is one of the lowest cost memberships in the city of New York. Classes and programming run by experienced operators like Imagine Swimming and New Heights Youth will be available to the local community at affordable rates. And community groups will be able to reserve courts at the recreation center for below market rates. The Recreation Center at the Armory will bring an anemone to the community that we have lacked for decades and greatly expand the range of low-cost athletic programming available to our local youth. I expect the Recreation Center will become one of the most popular places in Crown Heights and a true center for the community. 
Beyond the Housing and Recreation Center, the Armory will also include nearly 20,000 square feet of low-cost office space and presenting space for local not-for-profit organizations, organizations that have helped to build and create the community into what it is today. The developer has already reached agreement with the following local not-for-profits to occupy space. The Brooklyn Community Pride Center, Digital Girl Inc., Ife Tayo Cultural Arts Academy, James E. Davis Stop the Violence Foundation, New Height Youth, West Indian American Day Carnival Association. These and other Crown Heights not-for-profit organizations deserve this affordable office space and presenting space so that they can securely remain in our community. This space will be offered at rents more than 75% below market rate and is required to remain affordable for the length of the 99-year ground lease, creating a permanent reservoir of low-cost not-for-profit space that will help our community organizations stop, strive and stay there for years to come. The head house part of the armory Fronting Bedford Avenue will also include a 5,000 square foot community event space that will, avail that will be available to these organizations and others at an affordable rate. On top of all of this, there will be an additional 24,000 square feet of space available along President Street where the developer ha has pledged to work to bring Brooklyn Medical Plaza Center into the project, which would provide an invaluable community health resource for the neighborhood. Brooklyn Medical Plaza for over decades has been giving individuals an opportunity that do not have health insurance the opportunity to have free and or low cost uh, medical care in times of need. The developer has also pledged to incorporate arts programming into the community spaces of the Armory facility, which may include permanent and temporary exhibits for local artists and working with local cultural organizations to display cultural works from Central Brooklyn's diverse neighborhoods. All of these community benefits and community programs will be for nothing if they are not properly designed and distributed according to the community's actual needs. For this reason, I insisted that the developer agree to form a community advisory committee comprised of residents and community leaders from the Crown Heights and Central Brooklyn communities. The committee will work closely with the developer and the operator of the recreation center and head house facilities to help design and prioritize different types of programming to ensure that the community benefits are properly aligned with the needs of the local community. I am confident that the construction process at the Bedford Union Armory will also bring local benefits to Crown Heights. The developer has agreed to provide a real living wage to all construction workers on the project and has committed to holding multiple job fairs in the neighborhood to ensure local residents will have the opportunity to participate. The developer will also use the Higher NYC program in order to make sure that these opportunities are for the Brooklyn workforce. The developer has agreed to an MWBE participation goal of 25% of the total dollar value of the construction at the armory and has a well-documented history of meeting those goals at prior projects. I am looking to make sure I'm that sorry, that goal... Council member, I'm sorry. Sir, can you, um, Sergeant Lawrence, can you please remove that gentleman out of the chambers? I'm going to ask, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, excuse me, excuse me. Hold on. We're, we're just asking you guys to be respectful. Whoever is cursing, cursing while the council member is giving her statement is being disrespectful to the process. All I ask is that you be respectful to the process. Cursing is inappropriate. Am I right? Go ahead. All right, sir. Huh? What? Who, who was that? The gentleman in the back? Who was the one that cursed? That gentleman there. All I ask is that you be respectful to the council member while she speaks. Council member, you may continue. The developer has agreed to an MWB participation goal of 25% of the total dollar value of the construction at the armory and has a documented history of meeting those goals. Once the armory is open, the developer will require the future manager of the facilities to use best efforts to procure goods and services locally and curate and manage a list of suggested local vendors, which the local elected officials have already supplied. The developer has also reached an agreement with 32BJ SEIU, allowing the original residential property to be staffed with 100% union building service workers. 
Thanks to the dedicated advocacy of the Crown Heights community, the Bedford Union Armory has been transformed from a project originally starting with market rate condominiums and less than 20 percent of the housing units actually affordable to the community to a project that will stay fully in public ownership with 60 percent and that includes 250 units of truly affordable housing. In the history of the ULERP process, this might very well be the most dramatic change in affordability that has ever been achieved on a single project. Crown Heights has not seen this level of affordable housing developed in a number of decades. And as we achieve this, we also strengthen all of the other commitments of the project for low-cost community access to the recreation center, low-cost office space for not-for-profits, extensive community programming governed by a local advisory board, local hiring, living wage, and MWB participation. I would like to thank the administration, James Patchett, Jeff Nelson, Lydia Downing, and John Corcoran at EDC in particular. And I want to thank all of my staff, Council Land Use staff, and the community for their advocacy and engagement that made this project possible. I believe that when this facility opens and this community has an affordable community center, a new health care facility, as well as the opportunity to move into brand new affordable housing and not-for-profits can better serve their community because they don't have to worry about their rent, we will look back on today as a remarkable turning point in the history of this neighborhood. But at the same time, what I want to add is that for me, growing up in this community, living here for 42 years, and my parents and family living here for 80 years, I grew up in a community where we didn't have a swimming pool, we didn't have a recreational facility, we didn't have basketball courts, we didn't have local not-for-profit organizations that we could easily um, be accessible to our community. When we were planning for a safer juve for the last four years. Every year we would go to one police plaza and we would be given an outlook to see the, the state of affairs of our Crown Heights community. What the police department showed us was that there were over 30 documented gang sets or crews in our communities. We are doing our young people a disservice by not seeing that they are in a state of emergency. When we say that black lives matter, we're saying that black lives matter, but we're not recognizing that young people are losing their lives in our communities. And we've become so desensitized to it that it just seems like something that's a matter of fact. And it's just something that happens in our community, not something for us to prioritize in the way that we should. Um, as a council member, you have to go to many different homes to visit families after someone has passed away by being taken by a bullet or a stab wound, or something violent of that nature. This project is an answer to that state of emergency that our youth have found themselves in. Councilman, give me a second. Sergeant Arn, please remove him, please. Please remove them. I did not promise that. Lord, just give him a second. Please remove them. I did not lie. Yeah, you can remove it. Black lives don't matter to you. How are you going to break all of these people? How are you going to kill my neighbor? This project. Please. This deal is far better. This deal is far better than Atlantic Yards, which you supported and benefited from. Council member, Sergeant Arns, please, Sergeant, please remove and her I from did. the chambers. Please remove her, please. This project is producing more affordability than Crown Heights has seen in decades. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. We are, we are in the hearing, please. I, please, we do not want to clear, we do not want to clear the room. We do not want to clear the room. The council member is speaking. There are no sales of the Bedford Union Armory. We eliminated the luxury condominiums. We eliminated the luxury condominiums. I'm sorry. Sergeant, again, Bertha can you Lewis. Please clear the room. Can you, again, Council Bertha member, Lewis. Council member, council member. This particular Sergeant project is far better than your Atlantic Yards deal. Far better.
this project, the market rate is used to subsidize the recreational housing. You missed the council hearing that was held last week where you could have voiced your opinion. A public hearing was held last week and you were not present. There is no problem with that. This is. Council member, you can continue. I thank you. I thank you. For me, I, la I devoted the last almost 20 years of my life to building and creating a museum, a museum called the Museum of Contemporary African Diaspora and Arts. I created that museum because I felt very strongly that I wanted to have a safe space for our young people to be able to learn about their history and their culture and to have a greater understanding of one another. I devoted almost 20 years of my life to that effort. I didn't come here, uh, I wasn't a protester, I wasn't a rallier, I was a doer in that sense. I created an opportunity to have a state-of-the-art facility, a building and a space that would live beyond my lifetime. And so that's what I devoted my life towards, is the development of our youth. That's where my heart lies. And so for me, as an elected official for the last four years, we've had a number of rallies, we've had a number of protests, we've had uh, a lot of uh, dissension in our community. But at the end of the day, as leaders, we have to produce housing for our communities. We have to produce safe recreational facilities for our young people. We have to provide spaces where our institutions can live and thrive. And if we continue along this path, Crown Heights will continue to be a community that will have no affordability because we cannot get along as a community and people have found it to be uh, an opportunity for them to raise their visibility, an opportunity for people to uh, become internet stars, uh, if you will, at the expense of others. This has been a project and a process 
where because of the length of time that it has taken, that we have done a disservice to the community by not developing and building more affordable housing, by not creating recreational facilities, by not making sure that the young children at Medgar Evers Preparatory have an actual gymnasium where they can participate in athletic activities and strengthen their educational opportunities. We have to do better and we have to do more for our communities. The longer we continue with dissension, the longer we continue as a divided community, the longer we do those things, our community continues to hurt. I hope that through this process that we will recognize and be able to see that together we can create a stronger community where families can grow, where families can build, and where we can create stronger, stronger communities when we work together. I wanted to end uh, with a quote that I've always been very inspired by. This is a quote by Martin Luther King, and it says that courage is an inner resolution to go forward despite obstacles. Cowardice asks the question, is it safe? This has never been about being a safe project for me. This project has created and it has brought together many different opposing views to this project. Some people wanted to see 100% affordable housing. Some people wanted to see some people wanted to see no housing. So there you had the extremes from some people wanting no housing to some people wanting 100% affordable housing. Some people wanted only a recreational center. Some individuals wanted to eliminate the recreational center and have complete 100% affordable housing. There were so many different elements to how people saw and envisioned this process. I applaud this council for listening to all of the different approaches and trying to come to a space where, of course, no one is going to be happy completely, but that listen to the ideas and the views of many different people. So this was never about it being a safe project. The next line goes, expediency asks I'm the sorry, question. I'm sorry, hold on. Can you please remove that gentleman from the, from the room, please? And I'm sure you've lived in the community for decades. Yeah. Yeah. Expediency asks the question, is it politic? Certainly not. Vanity asks the question, is it popular? But conscious asks the question, is it right? And there comes a time when we must take a position that is neither safe, nor politic, nor popular, but one must take it because it is right. And I believe at the end of the day that this is the right project for this community. This was the greatest amount of affordability that has been achieved in decades. This will be a recreational facility that young people and their families can take their children to. And this is for the next generation. This is not necessarily for us. This is for future generations to have a place that they can call home. Thank you, Chair Salamanca. I thank all of you here that have voiced your opinions. We have heard you. I have taken on the difficult task of trying to take everyone's viewpoints and to merge that into a vision that we could live with as a community. I thank the land use staff. I thank Chair Salamanca and all of the members of this community and this committee. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Councilmember Combo. I will now call for a vote to approve with modifications LUs 808 through 812, the Bedford Union Army application, striking option two and adding option one. Council, please call the roll. Salamanca. I vote aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Traeger. Aye. By a vote of three in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and zero abstentions, the applications are recommended for approval with modifications and referred to the Foley Land Use Committee. I would like to thank the council, land use staff for preparing today's hearing and the members of the public and my colleagues for attending. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>